Hey guys, welcome to another live show. Make sure you guys are liking the video, subscribing to the channel and getting in the chat, letting me know how you guys are thinking and feeling. I have diluted here. Um, he thinks I'm gonna attack him. I'm very nice and I don't attack my guest. So Why would you think, what, who said that? Um, I mean, you didn't attack me. Yeah, so um, first I wanted to let you guys know that I'd asked Laura and Harry to do some vlogging for me during our game against Bayern and they attempted, they attempted, I will show you some of the videos that they made just to lighten the mood a little bit. I feel like not from like the last room, I think that was funny, but um, just from like the overall feeling of the Bayern game, I think that there's like, not like there's like a, it's, it was like a downer and the timeline, it definitely went into like full mayhem and like agendas and stuff like that. And I just, I just feel like we need a little bit of a laugh. So here, Harry and Laura with their little bits of, um, of content that they attempted to get for me while they were oh god it's your boy harry on the oh way to the arsenal game let's get it i'm telling you i asked them to vlog and this is what they gave me me 15 again these are a size two um on my feet if you guys, so guys i just thought i'd do like a little fit check before i left oh my god my mirror is so dirty sorry so i've gone with the home shirt um this is an extra 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 small because i'm so skinny um on the back we've got habits obviously there you go um so i'm rocking it with the um true religion jeans which i've had since 2015 again these are a size two um on my feet i'm probably gonna do some boots or something um let me know what you guys think about the fit um and then we will head off to go see arsenal They're literally vlogging for me. Strong lineup, can't really complain. I think we're in a. All right, guys. All right, Jess, the Cannon Club. Hello. Hope you're ready for tonight. Feeling excited. Obviously, a little bit nervous here, but all good. Seen the lineup. Uh, strong lineup. Can't really complain. I think we're in a position now where we've got 14, 15, 16 really good players. So Kivy all comes in. It's going to be a big night for him at left back, especially with Sane or Nabri on his side. And then, yeah, Martinelli in for Jesus. Didn't see it coming, but fair play. Big night for Martinelli. So, yeah, excited. Got some good options off the bench, and I'm still going for 5 1. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to share those with you guys because that's pretty much all I got. They tried, man. They tried. But, but they didn't have any like service or anything in the Emirates, so they couldn't send me any other videos. But I got the before. And um, shout out to Harry and uh, Laura for doing that for me. Big them up. Um, but yeah, guys, it wasn't probably what a lot of people expected against Bayern because there was a lot of three nils, four nils, five nils that people thought we were going to get. And I never really felt like that was the case. And then when you also look at the other games, they were all very close, like all incredibly close, like one, one goal advantage if you did have an advantage. But from your perspective, like, did you feel as though, like, when you saw the lineup, what did you what did you think about the lineup? Were you confident? Because, like, there was a lot of confidence in our lineup. And then after the fact, there was a lot of Arteta got it wrong and he was out coached. And I just kind of feel like, but nobody really felt like that before the game. So what were your thoughts on the lineup? In relation to out coached, I don't think he was out coached per se. Yeah. I, I, it's not because I think Arteta is the greatest man since sliced bread. I like him, but we, we, nobody out coached anyone really. If anything, you got to see that, you know, that experience can be overstated, but never overrated really and truly. You know, people can say what they want about Bayern Munich and their form and this, that, and the third. It's Bayern Munich. The vast majority of those players have been in these, in these scenarios. And the very fact of, you know, one thing that a lot of us Arsenal fans were looking forward to was, you know, it's just Arsenal fans in, in the stadium. Bayern Munich didn't care about that. Their players have been there, done it and wore the T-shirt. The game would be summed up by stupid mistakes, really. You know, one thing I've loved is our resilience and we, you know, it could have been better. It could have been worse. It's all to play for in Germany, but uncharacteristic errors, really, or errors that we thought were eradicated. And, you know, mistakes happen. You can never get a footballer for making mistakes. But if there was ever a time you didn't want to see that, 
then yes. Maybe I would say, if anything, Mikel Arteta maybe will go back at, go back to the drawing board because I do think we were quite open on the transition time after time again. But I think it comes down to the players. We weren't getting tight enough. We weren't getting close enough. I know Declan Rice and Havertz are on yellows, but they weren't making the smart fouls. It was just far too open. I feel we started the game well, ended the game well, relatively. In between, it's a mixed bag. And as we said on my platform, you can't afford to have that in the Champions League. And you can see that these players haven't been here. You know, me and you sat on this platform and even Saliba, we said against Porto, where really and truly in the second leg, you didn't have to do anything. They looked nervous. So it's one of them things, man. Anyone that was sitting there and saying three, fours, fives, I, I think you're smoking something special, really and truly. But better moments, terrible moments. Ultimately, you know, if we do go out and we look back to the second leg, it'll be one where we shot ourselves in the foot, which has kind of been the case when we've lost games this season generally. Like, Fulham was Fulham away in the leagues. The only time I think, think we've played terrible, I think, you know, we didn't help ourselves against Aston Villa, Newcastle, West Ham, obviously Bayern Munich, Chelsea, Spurs. So, yeah, there's that, man. I, I, don't, I mean, fans can be as overconfident and as optimistic as they want, but You've got to rein it in and you can never underrate anyone. And as me and you spoke about a week ago, when teams are struggling in the league or in their leagues, it's that for me, alarm bells start ringing because this is all Bayern Munich have to play for. Tuchel's leaving. Who doesn't want to win the Champions League? And who wants to lose respectfully to the new kids on the block? Nobody. Arsenal ain't got that pedigree. A couple of our players do. But yeah, we shot ourselves in the foot, man. But it could have been worse. That would be my thoughts anyways. Yeah, I mean... There was, uh, I think that's an interesting point. Like a lot of people were overconfident and the stadium went really quiet when we went 2 nil down. And I remember there was a comment that came through on the show that we did together, like just an hour, like a couple minutes ago. And they're like, well, you have to have European like leg or heritage and you don't have it. And I'm like, yeah, but like, if you don't have it, you still need to build it up. Like you can't, you just don't have it. Like it doesn't just come, you have to actually win. And until we do that, like, there has to be, I think, from the fans, like a sense of confidence, even when we're not in a moment of superiority. And if you do go 2 nil down or 2-1 down in a leg that you're still in a good position, you cannot go quiet. But I think there's just like an edginess to it, a, oh my gosh, it's happening again. And I do think that there was like a 10-minute period where we just – as like the fans in the stadium and the players on the pitch just capitulated. And that's all it took for Bayern to get a foothold into the game. It was sad to watch, but it kind of is what it is, you know? And it was just, yeah, it was tough. Um, Fl Florence says uh, the away goal rule usually kills us in Europe. Thankfully, this may be different. Um, Tawana says this was one of Rice's worst games and putting him in the eight wasn't the best idea having Georgie in Odegaard as the two holding with Rice advancing was not it. When it came to the midfield, do you feel like it's becoming more obvious or like it's re-emerging that Arsenal do have maybe something missing in midfield? I know we kind of talked about it on your channel, but I wanted to tease it out a little bit more because, you know, there's there's rumors of um, Musiala being available in the summer. We've been linked to several different types of midfielders. Is it just that simple where like, bring in a midfielder, drop Declan Rice in the six, and things will be a little bit more streamlined? Or what are your thoughts on it? Because it kind of went away, and now it's kind of back again. I mean, it's, it's obvious, really, and truly. I think a lot of Arsenal fans they kind of get caught up in the moment of what's working, and a lot of things have been working, you know. We need a midfielder. It's as clear. It's as clear as day. We need a central midfielder. You know, I'm quite frankly, I'm bored of it. You know, big up Partey, big up Jorginho. Take nothing away from them. I still would persist with making Declan Rice an eight per se, so he has it in his locker as well as the six. But we need an eight. We've been here before. Like we've said the same things, and in games like that, we need we need an eight because we talk about you know mentality and controlling the tempo and nervousness. How do you? promote confidence, holding on to the ball, doing the right things. And we didn't necessarily do that. And that goes for everyone. But ultimately, we need that. There's no way around it. You look defensively and you look in the final third, bar Trossard, because he's 29, they've got their best years in front of them. Defence the same. In central midfield, Declan Rice is the only one that answers the question of longevity and fit in our project. Partey, Jorginho, superb players. They're not going to be here long term. And, you know, I love the fact that Odegaard drops deep a lot this season. And I, I think it's going under the radar. But he had a terrific game against Bayern Munich. How much better would he be 
if he could, you know, still do that, but be afforded to stay further forward, how much better would it be if Declan Rice could learn to be that eight and be a bit more adventurous with his passing but you've got that eight that's that's tried and tested really like there's no way around it like to take Arsenal to the next level I would like two central midfielders I don't think that's happening I think you need a central midfielder and you need probably about two additions up front take nothing away from them yeah there there needs to be like a huge summer window I know we say this every window but I do think that like we need another big window. Um, and the longer that the season goes on, I feel like the more obvious those things are. Um, Cause we have some players in the team that we're not quite sure like how they fit in. There's some big holes in the group. And, you know, we've, we spoke about needing some more pace in the team, but something else that I do think maybe we're, we are lacking, especially in Europe is technical quality. And that might sound weird because we have up the technical quality. Do you think we, are lacking a little bit of that too, like the ability to receive the ball in, in tight spaces and and get out of difficult situations. I'm struggling to think of more than like one or two players that are press resistant. And Byron had like three or four out there on the pitch at once. And I felt like, ooh, this is a little bit of a mismatch. What do you think about that? I think a lot of it comes down to confidence and mentality as well. Because like going back to what you said about, uh, or better yet, someone in the chat said about uh, Champions League heritage. All of these things are relevant. And I think when you're in the Champions League or you get to the latter stages, I do think people fail to understand as much as it's about tactics. And me and you could be here all day talking about Arteta versus Tuchel, Arsenal versus Munich, the matchups. It's about psycholo it's psychological factors and it's about taking your moments. And those are two things that I don't... I think we've shown we can do on occasion, but we can't mm. necessarily do. And as much as I feel about that, and I've never been in this situation, so I might be being a bit ignorant, it's just a game of football. At the end of the day, a lot of you have transferable experience, whether that's because of your upbringing, competitions you've played in before, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you look at our failed pursuits of Mudrip, Pedro Neto, people like that. Clearly, Mikel Arteta would like to install more, more pace. Pay, obviously, I don't want someone who's fast but hasn't got a brain, but in general, you know, if you're a fullback, you don't want to play against space. You don't want to get into a foot race with that. I think Sane is great. We made him look better than he could have been on the night because of the, the things we're talking about. But it scares you, you know, and maybe to a degree we could have been naive with our high line potentially and going 1v1 with a lot of our marking with 1v1 demons, really. So it would be like that. And you said it in relation to moments, you know, Kane was, I wouldn't say he's anonymous, but he spent the whole day just elbowing Gabriel when he yeah. needed to take the pen. You put the pen in the back of the net. I don't think Gabriel uh, Gnabry, sorry, got much change out of uh, Benjamin White. But when he did, put the ball in the back of the net. I don't think uh, Sane was amazing across 90 minutes. But when he was called upon, things happened. That's probably what we need in our to our to, to our degree. And I don't want to mention it because I don't think it's fair on Benjamin White. But when we missed that opportunity with Benjamin White, he's not paid to score goals. I thought, ooh, I hope we don't come to regret this. So. Yeah, it's that's a learning curve. What I, I thought, and I said it on my watch along too, I was like, that's probably going to come back to bite yeah, us. Yeah, you're like, like ooh. Yeah, because it was wide open. And I know, like, Neuer's a good goalkeeper, but I think you have to put that away. He's straight yeah. at him, man. To be yeah. fair, as a fullback, though, he probably got, like, I do it all the time in Sunday League. You probably think I'm not in this scenario before. I just yeah. get a bit excited, but he should, he, he should pull it away 100%. That being said, though, like, I know, like, Mikel said that, and a lot of people are feeling that way. You still don't have to give them a goal, you know? We, we still could have gotten more opportunities. Because what I thought was happening was when Ben missed that chance, that we were on them, and they were right on the edges of, if we go 2-0 up, I do think that that's kind of it, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like they, they lose confidence. Um, and we didn't get it. That we, but we still could have maintained that level of pressure. But all it really took was a very hopeful, random kick from um, Musiala into the channel. I'm that, in trouble. Like, and we were in trouble. And I just don't feel like that should result in a goal for Bayern. And so, no matter what Arteta's saying or whatever we think about Ben White not the players. scoring, you cannot give up goals like that. And I just think Saliba and Gabrielle and the back line in general, Raya, pick kind of the worst day to be at their worst. Like, genuinely, this was not the stage to be, you know, and Couldn't I've have seen... Couldn't have picked a better time. Yeah, it, and I, I saw a lot of, like, oh, well, you know, Arsenal look funny under the light when it comes to the Champions League. They look like I'm completely... We should different. do. 
We should do. When do these players play in that before? They should. The majority yeah. of them. We should look funny in the lights. But in life, you know, only when you're outside your comfort zone are you going to change. And it goes back to what I said. Like, no matter what we say about buying or whatever, we shanked it ourselves. Like, we shot yeah. ourselves in the foot because we didn't defend to the high standards. Was it complacency? Was it the occasion? I think a bit of everything because I think naturally when you've been doing what we've been doing in the Prem, you know, we've never been in a better position to equip ourselves against Bayern Munich. Naturally, there's that healthiness of complacency, which I like that because, you know, what's the alternative, Jess? What we've seen for years, we, we pardon my language, but we sit back, we be behave like some pussy holes and then things happen yeah. to us. And I think, again, I don't want to find negatives where there's none. I don't want to find positives where there's none, but it could have been better. It could have been worse. One thing I will say is to dominate possession and all of those statistics does give me optimism. But as you know, football, you've got to put the ball in the back of the net and we haven't quite got that when it matters really in yeah. the Champions League. So it's a learning curve, man. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I was reading because I didn't, I guess I didn't, I didn't do enough research like prior to the game. But then after I was like looking at some of like what Bayern are best at, they're actually kind of like us in this weird way where when you have less of the possession, you can be a lot more dangerous. That's and I just feel like, yeah, the way that our game, like the way that the game was actually suited them quite well. And maybe when we go to Munich, it'll suit us a little bit more because the emphasis will be on them to have possession. And then maybe we can hit them on the counter, which is something that we didn't really get a chance to do. And I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't test Delit and Dyer more because they're very Especially slow. Dyer. Because when yeah, we, we did, Dyer was giving it away, but then we stopped. Yeah. Um, and we have to stop cop coughing up the ball. Um, it's not just this game. It's Man City, Porto. There's just been games where we've been unreliable on the ball that I'm not used to. You know, like last season, I don't remember us being so jumpy on the ball. And that could be a lack of technical quality. But I also think it's just a little bit of like, here, you take it. Here, you take it. Here, here, here. You know, and that's unfortunate. Oh, there against Poole. Away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we just didn't, it's like we could not hold on to it for some reason. And I just thought that that was weird. Uh, Tawana says without a proper aid, our left wing will suffer in big games. It's suffering right now. There's been a lot of talk about Martinelli in this and I, I'm struggling to find out or I'm struggling to connect why he's such a main character in this conversation because we got the early goal. We were on top. We gave away a silly goal. Then we gave up an, another silly goal and then we came back and our left wing is the person that scored, you know, so uh, who came in for Martinelli. So from the right hand side, though. Yeah, for the right hand side. But what's stopping Martinelli from getting into the? I guess that's my convert. Like, that's where I'm struggling to understand why we're back to well, Martinelli's isolated. And that's why we didn't do well against Bayern. Why do you think this conversation continues to come up? Because we're still very lock hand sided. I'd say last year, maybe it's because, you know, Martinelli scoring. I know he plays centrally, but Odegaard was scoring as well as Saka. We looked a lot more all rounded in previous years, even going back to when we had Kalajan action this year, we look a lot stronger down one side than versus the other. And I feel one thing is because Saka is always there, Benjamin White's always there, Odegaard's always there. We look at left back, we, you know, it's a revolving door. A lot of people that have had opportunities. Me and you have been speaking both on this channel and my channel about left, about uh, the left eight. And then, obviously that is going to play a part and then you've not got no Gabriel Jesus not saying he should start but football is about relationships these are all playing a part in Martinelli there's got to be a reason he still plays regardless of his form under Mikel Arteta I do think there is a lot of logic with that but in life you need to ask yourself questions so Martinelli needs to re he has had injuries as well but he needs to reinvent himself you know if you're not going to get the ball in behind like he was last season how can what can you learn from your, your your partner on the other side? You know, Saka. If you don't get the ball in behind, he goes inside. And I think Martinelli needs to make don't lose what you are, which is that tenacious in behind guy. Because I think there's been times I've wanted even Bakayo to receive the ball inside a lot more. Mm -hmm. But you've got to learn to affect the game a lot more, man. You've got to just be smarter, really. And I guess um, from what we don't see, and I can't comment on it because I'm not Mikel Arteta. There might be tactical reasons as to why this is happening. Like Martinelli might be doing certain things purely because, and everybody else, the manager's telling you to do that, which we're not privy to. So I don't yes. know, man, but I, I believe in him. Yeah, for sure. Like it's it's not that I I don't I can see how it's affecting him, but I can also see ways that maybe he could be better. So exactly. and I don't I never really think every single conversation is either it's the manager or the player. I think a lot of these conversations are very much so gray areas, but I feel like agendas make it so that it has to be black and white, and it doesn't feel black and white to me at all. Um, you know, but in order for Arsenal to be their best, I feel like both of our wingers have to be effective. 
last season, we were so consistent with Martinelli and Saka. Consist like they were so consistent, consistent threat. This season, it's been a little on or off. You know, sometimes Saka's on it, sometimes. Martinelli really hasn't been on it, but like you know what I mean. Like it's been even that in the big games when Martinelli's back. To, to aid your point, we haven't waffled about creativity really. We haven't yeah. mentioned anything, and even yeah. in the early Champions League days. So how far does it go? I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 really a tough one. Lucas says Tim Stillman said we need to decide if Rice is our Rodri or not. And there's been a lot of comp I think this is this is all goes into the left center mid conversation that that basket of genuinely Rice is the number six. And he needs to be able to sit in that position. But because we didn't get the left center mid, we need him to play in the eight so we can get Jorginho or Partey in. And that shuffle and has been injured as well at times. So yeah. yeah. And that shuffle Money. is is creating a little bit of madness in there. So yeah, we just have to just hold that, I guess. Like I don't I don't I don't know. We've been talking about it since the beginning. Ben says Rice can be Patrick Vieira play well on both ends. Kurt says, guys, we need to calm down. Arsenal have a long way to go to be elite. The results against Bayern is not bad at all. Yes, Bayern are poor in the league this season, but on their day, they can beat anyone. And I think I feel like this is kind of where I'm at with it. It's like when you look at the other results, you can see that like we were never about to run Bayern over, but we did have a missed opportunity there to maybe have like a little bit of a gap or whatever. But it's it's a tough pill to swallow. I do think people have kind of forgotten what the Champions League is like um it's not easy these teams are not any any by the way any draw we would have gotten would have been difficult i i genuinely stand on that i don't think any of them would have been a walkover like you know what i mean so we need to just chill you know um lucas says kimmick showed his experience and quality what did you think of his performance shut up, shut up. like shut up shop very good game. i think him in, the, in particular and goretz got shut up shop quality performance kimmich shirt kimmich doing what kimmich does mm. it's interesting because like I mean, we spoke about him coming in for midfield, but I mean, I would take Kimmich. I, I just, again, Same. you guys saw it. Uh, he's not the bum that everybody was saying that he was, was he? Bum, you know, if so. you ever was saying that's bum. Uh, but, but you know how you know how it is. You nobody rates the Bundesliga, so the teams in the Bundesliga, especially if you're not having a good season, all of a sudden become crap. I don't know. Like Kimmich is a good player. Listen, um, Davies will be out. How big of an advantage is that for us? Definitely. Well, you know, it should it should be even more of an advantage because, you know, I actually feel down the right hand side, obviously they had Gnabry and Davies, we've done all right. But with, you know, Thomas Tuchel being a Champions League winner and experienced man and then Maverick, as much as I think that's a strength, it could be a weakness because I'm sure Mikel Arteta is planning for who in theory could play there, but who is going to play there? What are they going to do? How are they going to mitigate against that? So it'd be interesting. It would be an interesting dynamic, really. And obviously, that well, their whole left hand side would be different as well, because unfortunately, Gnabry picked up an injury. So it'd be interesting. But then you got someone like Kingsley Coleman, who's out of, in my opinion, him and Sane. Like Sane is more traditional and more aggressive with it. I think Coleman can do that, but he's very cute and clever. So there's a lot to think about on reflection for both sets of teams. Yeah, uh, Tope is saying that they have Guerrero, who is better defensively yeah. than Davies. Probably better defensively, but I think my my thing with Davies versus Saka is that Saka really couldn't use his athleticism or speed or anything to get beyond him because Davies is really fast. So I would still imagine that Saka will get some joy. I still don't think it's it's not going to be like I'm out there though, but, you know. So it's still going to be hard, right? Exactly. Um, Ade Damola says the game was like on a bad day. We got a result, Bayern. A Bayern's ground might just click for us and boom, we are there. I mean, I could see this game going to penalties, to be honest. Like, I could definitely have a knock on it. effect in the Prem for us as well. Yeah. So hopefully we get the business done. But I don't know. Like, do you do you agree that, like, I don't know, away from home against the better sides, we've done well to keep them quiet, but we haven't had enough going forward. That's my fear, I think, is that I know we can keep them quiet because we're good away from home and we can defend. I'm just like, do we have enough goals? Do we have enough threat? I feel like we always look a little blunt. On paper, yeah. 
but it's like we've been saying on the theme of this live stream it's all psychological you're going into the lions then obviously there might be some things that are similar be between the game at the emirates and what we'll see next week but you know no two games are the same both managers are going to do their homework both managers are going to review what they personally feel they did or didn't do the players obviously two calls are tinkerman as well we now know that i i wouldn't quite say it's fair to say they counted attack or that was that was the worst thing to do but they were very street smart they knew he was going to go there be aggressive feel the confidence go 1v1 high line probably a bit of naivety in our team and they exploited that we know what we're stepping into they've got their fans it's the lions then you know like you said there you know it's either going to go to pen well extra time and pens you're flirting with going out of the competition it's all it's all to play for um i do agree with you in that you know I definitely hope it's a defensive performance like with City, but we're going to have to get moments and take them because realistically, I know Martinelli had a shot that went wide. Evidently, Saka and Trossard have scored and Ben Ben White missed as well. But And I and I'd, I'd, watch, the, I'd watch the game a third time, and but, but watching it twice, there's not really too many clear-cut chances you can sit there and say we had per se. Bayern as well to a degree. So we're going to have to create a lot more. Like we, we haven't really been doing that in those big games recently. Yeah, and I just wonder why that is. Like, we know we can create chances, but sometimes I feel like we rely so heavily on our patterns and they get shut down because we're they, these teams scout us for weeks and then they know where we're going to try to pass it. They know how to stop Odegaard and Saka for getting into those free spaces. Obviously, Bayern fell asleep that one time and we, we got free. But I just think we're going to have to try to come up with moments. And I feel like we're struggling to create those i don't think our i don't think our players lack the ability to have moments i feel like psychologically they can't get to the point where they come out of the what well, and i don't know if that's because mikhail has such a tight leash on them or what but chossard can create moments jesus can create moments Saka can create moments odegaard can create moments or do you disagree with that no, I think we, I think we do. I don't. I, again, I just don't think we have that healthy randomness. I guess it's a double-edged sword in that we're so That's well coached. We thing, just don't the have randomness, that. the the um not inevitability, but like that we don't create a lot of uncertainty with the other team. I feel like they know what we're going to do, and a lot of times they can't stop it. But it's yeah. nothing they haven't seen. Yeah. So if they scout it well enough, there's nothing that's surprising to them. That's why that you want Martinelli back to form because he's probably the poster boy of just randomness. Jesus to a degree as well. Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess it's a day for Kai Havertz, man, you know. Somebody's got to create something, you know. I just don't know who who it's going to be. So let's talk about some individual, you know, uh, themes or performances. We spoke about Kivior. He wasn't good and he got yanked, you know. How do we go into the second game against Bayern? Who do we start? Is it Zinchenko who actually ended up having a really good game? Um, I think it was a good game for him. Or is it a Tommy game? Do you think we'll see? Like, was it that bad of a performance where you think that KBR can't be trusted at all from now into the rest of the season? What are your thoughts on it? I think it'd be. It quickly. Like, it became KBR was the, the choice. And Zinchenko and Tommy dropped down. Now it's like, well, can Kivior play a game and everything switch quickly again? So what do you think? I mean, you know, football's a silly old game. You know, you hire up Kirio, Kirio is a, some fans, Kirio is the best thing since sliced bread. You have one bad game, you're finished, where it's neither sides, right? If Kirio plays, he's got my confidence. And one bad game, as as much as you picked, the, as I think you said it on my platform, you picked the worst day to kind of do that. I don't think you should be cast off. But... I think Arteta needs to maybe go with either Tommy Asu or Zinchenko. And I don't really believe with starting Zinchenko, but he did have a good cameo. It could be a chess match where we need randomness and one where we need experienced individuals. If you're asking me, I'm playing Tommy Asu. Mm. Yeah. Tommy against whatever fullback. Whatever they're doing. Yeah. Tommy Asu. Just strong 1v1 defenders. And I know Gabriel and Saliba didn't do that at home, but, you know, them two, Benjamin White, Tommy, lock it up, innit? Yeah, I I agree with that. I think um, you got to lock them up. And then if we need something a little bit more adventurous, then you go with Zinchenko. But I do think that, like, Kivior will need to sit this one out. Um, and then Jesus, you know, he came in and showed what he can do. Um, what I do like about Jesus' performance is that he gave us more creativity. And I just feel like all the burden wasn't on Odegaard for once. Um, he played like he just popped in and just, like, was creating – chaos which is great how would you how would you deal with the front group you know from the aston villa game like who are you starting and then who are you starting against byron is it the same 
or is it a little bit different based on like needing to rest people or different needs and and things like that? I don't know. Like, are Villa like a really good defensive side? I I think they've given up quite a they, few. Goals. They 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 play off sides quite a lot and they are missing injuries, but you know they're fighting for Champions League. They've got Udo Emre, and it's cliche yeah. as it is. You know we need to react quickly. You know defeats can be contagious, winning can be can be contagious, and we're fighting for the league, so we need to win. Yeah. It's a techie one, man, because we got good we got good problems. I think Saka's playing both games for me. If you're asking me that, I am playing Kai Havertz, and then I think between Jesus, Trossard, Martinelli is is free game for the Aston Villa game. I might lean in towards. I think Trossard deserves to start, but I understand if Jesus gets another opportunity to add minutes into his legs, and I also understand if Arteta keeps faith. But if you're if you're asking me for my lineup for both 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 games against Aston Villa, obviously David Raya, Gabriel Saliba pick themselves as does Benjamin White. You know what? Kirill, don't let me down. You can play against Aston Villa. Kirill will play at left back. Uh, no, let, don't let me down, man. I don't, I'm not a fan of just like you, you gas up a player and then you just turn on him straight away. I understand if Tommy starts. I think he might start Tommy. And I think when you look at the run of games into the Bayern Munich game and what we saw with the lineup, you never know what Arteta is thinking. But you know what? Kirill left back. I think Partey's got to get some minutes. Give me 45 to an hour. Partey's there. Odegaard's there. Rice is there. Saka's there. Have Archer going up front, and on the left hand side, I'll probably lean towards Trossard, but it's, it's free game against Bayern Munich. Ben White, Raya, Saliba, Gabriel, Tommy's playing for me, Partey, uh, Partey Odegaard, and obviously Declan, Saka, Havarts will still play up front for me. And you know what, Gabriel Jesus, because I want to lean on players that if they not necessarily won the Champions League, they've been in and around. And I do think even when you watch the game against Bayern, again, people can say what they want about Jorginho, but you could see him, even Rice as well, telling people, calm down, relax. Even, I know people laugh at him because he didn't make the slide tackle, but he was pointing for about 50 years before we saw the penalty, what to do. So I need people with temperament. I want Tommy Asu there because I think, you know, obviously you've played football. If you knock the ball into Sane and you see Tommy Asu isn't a prick, you're not going to do that many times. But unfortunately, with Zinchenko, and Kirill, if you see your teammate Sane is getting change out of him, then you're going to keep giving him the ball. But just because you're not in the starting 11 don't mean you're not going to need to be utilised, man, really. Yeah. You said that Partey should start against Bayern. I'm starting you... him. I'm starting him. That's I'm starting him. If Jorginho starts, fair enough, but I'm I'm starting him. Like we got to take risks. Like I understand if Jorginho starts, I'm cool with it. But I just want a bit more athleticism. And like there was too much. No two games are the same, but I just feel there was too much of a turnover there. At least with Declan mm -hmm. Rice and Partey, they've got a bit more about them. Of course, Partey's got elements of ring rust, and you know we've already took the we've already taken crazy risk in it. So might as well, well, man. I think what we we what we have found out is that Jorginho and Rice may not be the best combination in the way that we played it against Bayern. We already kind of know that. So Split maybe them around them. Yeah, maybe. I, I just, I feel like Rice has got to be in the six to stop the counterattacks. That's why we have him, right? So it's a little bit, it's a tough one because sometimes big risk comes with big rewards and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, we have to do something different for the away leg. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe even against Villa, like, I don't know. I feel like against Villa, you have to get Jesus in the lineup to just keep his sharpness. That's why I think Partey won't be a thing, because I think he'll play against Villa. I don't I don't think he'll start against Bayern. Yeah. There's, yeah. Arteta, this is, these are Arteta's things that he has to think about. You know, he knows, he's seen enough against Bayern to know if they were that good going forward, or at least that dangerous going forward away from home against us, they will still be that at their place so we need to be very very careful careful I, yeah i don't think thomas is stopping any counter attacks but he does have the ability on the ball he's a little bit more athletic than Jorginho, just about so it's something to really That's think harsh. About. he's way more athletic than him respectfully to Jorginho. come on come on even though he's looking rusty come on jess man he's way more athletic than him because jorginho has got this upstairs i'd rather have that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Tawanda says Arsenal haven't lost a game whenever Havertz gets goals or assists. Some of y'all still doubt him. He's a match winner. I think his performance against Byron was a little ghost like, you know, um, I don't think I don't think Havertz had a good uh, it's, it's, he didn't have a bad game, but I thought it was a little bit like. Yeah, 
it was a little he's playing the same way he's always played and i actually think he's done all right like he mocks in he gets involved he does all of that stuff obviously individual moments he might do that but individual quality is never going to do what other guys done but he was yeah. involved in Saka's goal Havertz did everything I wanted to I actually feel no one could say Odegaard weren't man of the match but I think Odegaard Havertz Saka obviously the boys off the bench I think they all did all right man like I if you told me in August Jess when we started doing these videos that I'd be saying this at this time but Havertz I'd say you're bugging out but that's the beautiful thing about football isn't it really yeah. But I don't. Somebody made a comment about the yellow cards with Havertz and Rice. I swear, in this game, if they get booked, it don't matter for the next round. Yeah, we're I we just needed to avoid it this game. Like we needed to avoid it yeah. against Bayern. If they get a yellow, it's it's restarts anyway. Yeah, um, so we're good now. Cool. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, Basic Monster says Partey will keep giving the ball to opposing team and then get injured again at the end of the season. I feel like that's yeah. that's harsh. Like it is. I feel I feel like. He's giving away the ball because he's hasn't fucking played all season. Like genuinely, I think he, he hasn't played a full 90 since he played right back at the beginning of the season. You guys know how long ago that was? That was like September. We're in April, you know? So it's been a long time. And then when you also remember that Partey is the type of person that needs to like get going, I'm not surprised that he looks the way that he looks, but we could really use his quality right now. And I'm just wondering if it's the time to risk it, him and Tommy, just to what else, I guess what else do you have to lose? Maybe you know? Alta even does something random. Like I don't expect to see Fabio Vieira or Smith Rowe, and I don't necessarily advocate it, but like as you said, big risk, big reward. Might have to do something that is unpredictable in that sense. Arteta made a big song and dance about the squad. Now's the time to use the squad. Everyone's fit, including Timber. Now I've, I'd say every player is in contention to potentially mm -hmm. be involved apart from Timber. So use it, innit? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'd, I mean, Emil or Vieira against Aston Villa might actually be an option. More realistic, yeah. Um, Trader says, um, do you think Bayern will play differently and how will it, how will this impact on what we do? Thoughts? Probably got to be on the front foot a lot more. You're at home, innit? But it's a psychological one, really. I think they're at home. Their fans are going to be a bit more demanding. So probably... But you just never know. And obviously, as, as me and Jess just said earlier, with no Davies and Gnabry, that might put a small spanner in the works. And I think they, I don't know how to make it make sense, but I think watching the game again, they'll probably review how they used Musiala because I know he was involved with the switch of play, but he was quite anonymous, really. And to be fair, he got bullied for the, he got bullied for about two phases of play before we got back in the game. So you never know. As I said earlier, I think with Arteta and Thomas Tuchel, the experienced men, they're going to review what they did. Sorry for the mute in there. What they feel went right and wrong personally. So, yeah, man, I expect to see something different, really. What that is, not a clue, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything, but I just feel like they'll want to play more. They'll be the more possession team, and we should give them possession. They're, they, we, we didn't play right into their hands. I just feel like the game state suited them a lot, and we made the mistakes in possession that we usually don't make and that's what gave them it gave them the the momentum gave them an inch they took yards yeah exactly so i just yeah every time i think about it, it just is like i cannot believe it um arsenic says how consequential a 3-2 lead would have been um i guess for us i mean i feel like the job it would still be the same i feel yeah. like with it's at zero zero, which is basically what it is now, where we have to get go away and win, or one nil over there is pretty much the same. When you have to go away, you want as as much of a margin between the two of you as possible. And so I think you know, obviously now we don't have an advantage at all. But I genuinely think that like three two is so not that different two two. I don't think I it's think that. You're bang on. Yeah. So essentially, we needed to score three goals and give them none to be super co like comfortable yeah. like, genuine. Ideal scenario yeah yeah exactly i mean like it's just whew, it's wild um tony says dyer actually looked good playing for bayern he should play for england german football makes some players better um again i think it was like a missed opportunity not to actually test them we didn't test them enough um so uh he looked good because there was basically no pressure. There was so just it's so all about us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there was no pressure on them. 
there there really wasn't. I mean, we didn't make them have to think or really defend that much. We didn't put them in in uh in compromising positions. It was just more like every time we got in possession, I just felt like in, Gabriel and Saliba had a lot of the ball. They were trying to find passes. We tried to go around the houses because we couldn't find any access through the center and we would just give it away. That's kind of what it was the majority of the time. So, um, but yeah, good for him. The Gunnar Factory says we can 100% win. Uh, we need a, Euro a big European result. We've had nothing over recent years and this could be it. I don't, listen, I feel like one thing about Gunners that we will always know is that we can be we can we'll overreact in one way or the other. We'll get overly excited about something and overly negative about something. Like this is not our last and final chance to do anything. Um we'll be in Champions League again next season. So I think like we have to also I'm trying to give them the grace of like we haven't been here in a long time and you guys haven't played in this competition so my expectations are not that high. I actually went into the season feeling like the quarterfinals is probably as far as we get anyway. So let's not, because I know what's, I know if we go out to, I know what's going to happen. If we go out to Bayern, I know it's going to be like the season's done. We're shit. And I just don't think it's that simple. Um, what were you, actually, what were your expectations before the season started? What did you think we do in the Champions League? Scout the group stage. Scout the group stage. Uh, like, <laughs> they were on the floor. Scout the group stage. Like, honestly, you get out the group stage and just take it from there. That was the minimum. Just get out the group stage as a minimum. And then we take it from there, man. Obviously, once we got out of there into the last 16 and with the greatest of respect to Porto, you want to win that. And then it became a case of, and still is right now, which is in the balance. How far can you go? Like, how far can you go so that you have building blocks from last year, man? Really, yeah. well, for the next year. There's, um, There was a, I saw out like a stat. I forget who put it out that this, this game that we played against Bayern is the first time since like forever. That 14 we, years or something like that. That we haven't lost the first leg. That we haven't lost the first leg. And so I think that, like, you guys, I, genuinely, we've been so diabolical in European competition. And so I'm not saying that this is great. And if we were to go out to Bayern, it wouldn't be devastating. But it's also, like, let's be serious. Like, we don't, we haven't, yeah. We're a long way to go, man. Very yeah, long way like, to go. <laughs> We're building something special, but, like, yeah. yeah. We need to relax. Uh, relax. Three says, uh, if we go out, winning the league is a must. Thoughts? I don't look at the league table. I don't even know Arsenal are in the title <laughs> challenge. But if we are, it'd be nice to, you know, win our first one at the Emirates. If we did have a chance of winning the title, which I <laughs> think in theory is more obtainable than the champs, go oh and do God. it, innit? But I don't, I don't know. You you know more than me. I, I didn't even know Arsenal in the title challenge. Like, I, in many ways, winning the oh, league and just seeing players goodness. improve, man. I don't know about winning leagues and that. I, I, well, three-pointer, just, you, you put this out here. If we go out, then winning the league is a must. A must... And then what? Like, if we don't, what is, whoa, what are we, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't think anyone should be sacked, but I think everyone yeah. should ask themselves questions. Yeah, well, for sure. And I, I just think that, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that we've gotten this far. Like, we're, this is kind of what I wanted at the Can't beginning. Cap, I am. I am. I'm <laughs> I know it's been, I don't want to say it's been favorable because you got to go out there and do it. But I think our group, we took care of business. Well, the group was shit. Yeah, man. Like, if yeah no, no, our group, no, no, you can't, you can't say that, man. You can't say that. This is, Len, Lon's so good, so, so good. Sevilla, so, so good. PSV, a powerhouse, like very difficult. Oh my Port, gosh. Port, Port heritage. Difficult games, man. But on a serious yeah. note, like we dealt with the business we should be. This is where I'm looking at the players now because. At most, and, and that's another reason why I was, obviously I've never been in these lot shoes, but that's another reason I was disappointed with us now having to talk about in hindsight, psychological factors and things, because obviously yeah. it's, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be nervous. You you know, anyone that's done anything groundbreaking in life or something, they haven't, you're going to feel like that, channel that. But for me, if you're not using, not scapegoating Kirill, but if you're Kirill, if you're Benjamin White, if you're the defenders, you want to see how you perform against the best attackers and vice versa with the, with, with the um, our attackers. This is what we worked for as a minimum last year. I know the byproduct became fighting for the league, but this is where we wanted to be. So I wanted to see more. I don't want to say courage because I don't think it's fair to say they lack courage, I but courage. I know what Pardon? you mean. I, I, I said, I know what you mean about you wanted to see more. Yeah, just uh, a bit more. Like desire is not even the right word. Just, a, you know that just let your nuts hang, man. Pause. Like we're here. Like we're here. You know what it is? I feel like 
what we're we are so I don't want to say we're stiff or anything like that. What am I trying to say? Like last season, we were so gun ho and almost like that youthful exuberance gave us big moments in games. And we had like very special goals and stuff like that. This season, I think we're a little bit more calculated. Yeah, a little bit more calculated, a little bit more reserved. And I think more street smart, to be fair. Yeah, I feel like this this may be a, a this may be a hot take. But last season's team probably would have done better in the Champions League or given us more moments or had a little bit more confidence. I think so. I think last season's team Do you know what? didn't care. Granite, Granite was there, so you never know. I, I might back that. Granite was there. Yeah, I mean, just think about the way that we were playing last season. We literally did not care. We put Gabrielle and Saliba and said, you save us and we're just going to fucking go. And it came up with moments. It, it hurt us on the other end. But I do think last season's team might have been a little bit more loose. And I feel like when I watched the other teams in the Champions League yesterday, I did feel like there was like a almost like a freedom where we still kind of play with like a little bit of reserve. And I don't think that that's the wrong thing. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that either one is like so much better than the other. But I think this team needs to figure out a way offensively to tap into a little bit of freedom to create moments. Otherwise, we won't get them. If we just continue to play in the patterns, we won't do it. You know, that's that's how I feel. That's personally how I feel. Um, but then again, if we do that and we get ripped, then I'll be like, why aren't we more reserved? Like, why didn't we just, you know, so it's neither here nor there. Yeah, for sure. You are right, because if we could combine, obviously we were decent. We, we've scored a lot of goals this year and last year, yes. the building blocks for defending. But it's right, because if, if we could marry the attacking side from last year with the more street smartness this year, then potentially, but it's, can't, can you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, and I maybe wish you could. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And because I don't like the way last season crumbled because I feel like we didn't have that reserve or that street smart. So, yeah, like I'm not saying that last season's team was like so much better. I'm just saying that maybe they would have created more moments in the Champions League because they'd be less reserved. Um, so, yeah, Crispy Rice says St City still have to get through. It's to play for for everyone, isn't it? Really, isn't it for everyone? Who do you think is going to go through of like all of them since they're all so tight and, and well, finally? I, I don't want to be harsh to Dortmund, and I think Borussia Dortmund at home, but I say they're the only ones that I think you lot are gone. Like Dortmund, you're gone. I don't think anyone can predict predict Real Madrid versus City. I don't think Real Madrid have the best record at the Etihad, but then again, you'd be a fool regardless of every statistic to write off Real Madrid. So. That one there is in the in the in the in the in the balance. Who else is there? PSG, Barca. I bet Barca to get that done. Us, I can't look beyond us in it. Whether my heart believes that or not, we've got to talk that into existence. I'm not missing anyone else out of mine. I can't be. Yeah, I've said PSG, Barca, Arsenal, Bayern, Atletico, Dortmund, Real Madrid yeah. City. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's all to play for, man. People said the Champions League fell off. Lol. It's just because you're not in it, basically. That's yeah, what I Exactly. The Champions League has been fun this season. Um, from like an, like if I can take my Arsenal hat off for a second, it's been good. I'm just so nervous, like about the next game. Um, as I should be. Keenan says Bayern, then City, then Athletic in the final. We can do this. Let's just get past Bayern. Like genuinely. Like, let's just get past Bayern. Do our thing first and then see man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dale says Arsenal November 2022 version maybe beats Bayern, but not April 2023. That's the, that's it. That's the comment. The well, team you know he was sick around then, isn't it? Huh? You know he was playing good around then, isn't it? So maybe, 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 maybe my Brazilian guy. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, those first four months were brilliant. It was, not it? And then Brilliant. now he's even like Lacazette, like, really. As much as I love him. Life, eh? It is Lacazette-esque. Like, it's Lacazette-esque. Like, I'm not going to say nothing. No, nah, listen, no. Deep, deep it, like, what? Like, I'm not saying it's like for like, but we praise Lacazette like, for working hard. We praised him for his work rate. Of course, even this Gabriel Jesus is a lot faster and whatnot than than Lacazette. Like, Lacazette like, was just yeah, like, that something was else, but... It's the same things we got onto Lacazette is kind of what we excuse with Jesus, even myself. Just wish he could score goals, man. But see, like that's that's where I'm a little bit more like I would actually I would accept the first four because the first four months that he played for us, he had some nasty goalless streak, you know. But I still like the performances. Like he still added a lot. 
as long as he's that person, I'm kind of like, I'm like, we're not gonna get the goals. I accept the faith. Keep the faith. He's back soon, man. Back. Saw what he did. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. back. I learned that this move, people call this the fake lotion. Like, there's no lotion. Fake I don't know where you heard that, but I'm just like, I don't know. It's just so, I've always done that. In, and then it's the uh, I'm well, I'm blue. well creamed, but you see the metal in the brown and the skin is skinny. <laughs> <that. laughs> lotion. Uh, oh man. I was like, I saw somebody on Instagram talking about they were like, yeah, the the rubbing in the lotion, like that's that's me all day. And I was like, oh, so that's what it's called. Oh, okay. uh, that's just a habit, man. I just tend to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um let's see. I, Crispy Rice says I'm not I'm not scared of Real Madrid. Shit. Listen, I don't know what fear is. I don't, I don't know what's fear. What's fear? In life, you should be scared of anything. Like I don't know what fear is, but I'm pretty scared of Real Madrid if I didn't know what fear was. I'm, the burn about scary, man. I think I'm just a little bit more cautious than everybody else. I'm I'm very much so looking at like Vinny and Rodrigo and thinking, yeah, well. I'm saying. Uh, you know, you know. Heard all these guys, the, everyone's a mutt. Rudiger, boy, he's gonna be slapping Havertz. His head, Rudiger's gonna die before we score because before we score, Real Madrid yeah. are different, man. I'm just, I, it's Real Madrid, it's yeah. Real Madrid. <laughs> Dr. Dan says, uh, Rice signing of the season if Arsenal win the league and if you finish third, is it better than last season's series? I, I just feel like the questions like this is like, again, it's People don't like the answers because it's like, oh, well, you're going to sit in the gray area. You're going to sit on the fence. But again, like last season, we weren't we weren't playing in the Champions League. We we're playing in Europa League and we did terribly. And we were we went out of the round of 16 pathetically against sporting. So, you know, if we're and last season, we also fell away around this time in the title race. You know, I think we have more points this season in April than we did last season in April. So if we get all the way to the end and we lose within a point, you know, a point or two, and let's say we, this is as far as we go to me, it is a better season than last season because like we weren't in the champions league. And I know it's like, Oh, well, adding that in, like, it doesn't matter. It's still, you didn't win a trophy, but from an Arsenal fans perspective, we did I, August English super cup. So. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like we can, I, I would count it as progress, but it's not the type of progress that, means anything in the history books it's just from a personal perspective um in terms of rice like i do think rice is one of the signings of the season i'm sure that liverpool fans will feel like it's McAllister. um will feel like it's rice and people probably feel like it's cole palmer whatever but i just feel like rice has been he's definitely one of our players of the season i think gabrielle just about edges it maybe um but you cannot you cannot like look past how good he's been for us and how it may not show up at the end of the day, but we are better with him. I think he's made a massive difference. What are your thoughts on that? Like finished well, trophy list, nothing has really changed. Like you can't really say that, right? Do you feel like we've gotten any better? I mean, we, we kind of just said it. I know we're not attacking on all cylinders, even though statistically we are. I think we've shown more street smartness. I think our resilience has got even better. I think in every order, you know, fine tunings in line with your team getting better and managing uh, competitions and all of those things, we have improved. That being said, though, I mean, and it would be a season of progression per se, especially, you know, what we're doing in the Champions League up until this point. That being said, you said it there, history books, there's nothing to remember this. Obviously, if we go on and win every trophy every year for the next 100 years, we might look at this season or last season in a documentary and say this is where it all started but there's nothing etched in history um, for this year if we don't win something so yeah in relation to finish second or third obviously if we finish third excluding you know last year where we finished second it is you know regression but it's same difference for me really you know you're going to get Champions League if you don't win the Prem who really cares really and truly it doesn't matter it does matter of course but it doesn't matter and it'll be a season where I feel the thing I would take is We've very, we very rarely played poorly. Like Fulham away in the league, we were shit. There's nothing else. Every other time we've shot ourselves in the foot. And I'm not saying that to say Arsenal are the biggest and bad. This is can you eradicate these things and make less of that? Because had we have not, had we have found the back of the net, as I said earlier, against Villa, against Newcastle, against West Ham, not conceded against Spurs, not shot ourselves in the foot against Chelsea, you add up all of those points and don't even necessarily assume we won all of them. Where are we in this title race? Which I don't know the points and where we are in the table. So you don't know better than me. I'm just saying. 
Yeah. Um, it's crazy, man. Arsenic says Arsenal have an out football board, both Porto or Bayern. Yeah, but I don't think any team in any leg has necessarily been so dominant. Real I think Madrid that, didn't do that. Yeah, I'm moment. trying to understand, like, why do we have to out football people? And in, in the Champions League, it's moment. about – Exactly, it's about moments. So – I don't, I'm not quite sure that that's what I'm looking for. And I, I feel like if there's any, if any conversation, like at the end of the season, if we don't win anything, I think my main takeaway will be that we need to bring in an attacker and a midfielder that can provide moments in games where the margins are fine. I feel like that's where we've lost the most points against um, West Ham at home, uh, Newcastle away, Aston Villa away, the big games against the big teams, Porto away. Porto Fulham at home. How can I forget? Yeah, Fulham at home. We need somebody that can come up with moments. System is great. We're dominant in most phases. We still haven't lost in like 11 games or something like I that. Touch with Jess, man. Uh, yeah. So it's really, it. it's about that, you know, and people are talking about the Liao's and these kind of guys, like maybe... It is those types of players that we need to bring in because I know he can provide moments, whatever. But are we going to get out of the hood with Liao, though? I mean, but like, who else is on the market that we? So it's not like you can go get a. It's not like you can go Mbappe get a. Minute. Yeah, it's like it's not like we can go get that. So no, I like him as a baller. I think he's quality. Like, but I look at it, and again, you could learn all of these things and buy into it. But for the money, you, you only really look that good on the transitions. We don't get that much space in behind. The same struggles with Martinelli. You need to yeah. really buy into what Mikel Arteta wants from you. So it's like I like him as a footballer. If you're asking me, I'm a, as a football fan, bring Leal. As an Arsenal fan, for the money, I'm not too sure, sure. He's exciting. He's lovable. Like. He is a good player, but he's yeah, he's a lovable player. I can't, and he always talks about Arsenal as well. He's a very yeah, lovable player. I like him a lot, man. I like Leo, I really do. But yeah, me liking you don't mean you're lit, man. Like, yeah, I feel like our, our, our we need we're probably going to end up getting somebody that needs a little bit of Arteta's like upgrade. Arm like, around him, man. Yeah, yeah work with him that's going to be a little bit of work, but can be that player. And then the midfielder just has to be. A, it has to be like lights out it just has i'm sorry like if we be, get you know your job for me anyways you know <laughs> what you need to do there's no more listen big up fabio vieira and smith row but and i know we need multifunctional players but you need to be on what rice is on you're a midfielder simple none of this nothing else now like please because we're not gonna get out the hood until we until we do that for me anyways yeah for sure um i'm seeing a lot of bruno g in the bring him but Big but money. listen, but listen, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna hold you. If we only brought in three players and we spent the majority of that on a midfielder, I feel like what could I say? Like I'd rather get two or three great players that really move the needle than five players that are like, okay, well, we bought a lot, but like but that's the yeah. thing that we only need to obviously we put it in terms of depth and all of that jazz, we need more, but when you deep it, Jess, beyond the obvious, we only need to significantly upgrade what we're doing. We only really need two free players. Like, you, we both agree centre mid. We'd love a striker. If you can bring in a winger, great. We know we have to bring in a keeper. If we can, I'm sure we both agree, maybe a versatile defender. And then Arteta, if will you do whatever else you want to do in it. But So you're right. That's all we need. It's not all we need, but it's all we need. So it's like, if you have $150 million, to spend even at that that's like at least 75 on two players or something like that something you know so it's like even more or less in either direction i just feel like i'd rather just go for players that are actually going to lift the level and go for like four or five dudes that are kind of like yeah they're good but like are they really like no like just go get the people and in in particular midfield has enough players out there that could really move the needle can you just i mean byron do you, do you really like? Do you really need Kimmich? Probably not with a year left. Would Arteta even play Kimmich in midfield? I think he would, but there'll um, be a reason you're, you're doing your thing at right back. Barca, you have all those children coming through that are like really good. Do you really need Frankie? Really? Because he was balling out for everybody yeah. that's saying that he's a, he's a bum. He's definitely no. a bum. But mentality, no. though, I'm not. I don't know him, and I don't agree with this, but. Is he a Spartan? He looks a bit soft when times go are going tough. Like he looks like he might crumble still. I don't know. I'm just so asking. I mean, but what a how like Bruno G would be 
He would be look, Edu. I don't know how he didn't end up here. I would have loved Bruno Gomares. The more what did he say to Edu in those conversations? He must have said something. Eddie might have, Eddie was violating, man. Maybe we didn't have the money that we have now in it. I don't know. Eddie kept saying, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. He probably got disinterested, man. But he's he, he's a thug. When he's not concerned with kicking people, he's actually brilliant on the ball. It'd be amazing, in it? But if some butts swinging sure. roundabouts. Okay, you guys. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. We have exhausted time limit. And I'm sure both of us have things to do. Make sure you guys like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Get into the chat. Not get, not get into the chat, get into the comments after and let me know what you guys are thinking as well about everything that we spoke about. And make sure you guys go to DG's channel and like, subscribe, notifications, all that kind of stuff. You guys can watch the show. Watch the stream we did. She was angry at me, people. She was angry. She said, she, she said she'd being gaslighted and what she's saying. Crazy things. Gaslit crazy so things. And as, you know what's the worst part about it, too, is like, you hurt my feelings so much. It's all good, man. It's all good. 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 You're all right, man. You're all right, man. It's all right. Just keep smiling. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Come, come on, Artie, man. We won't do you like that. Come, man. <laughs> <sighs> okay, you guys. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah.